action be taken against climate change? In the stimulus for our speech to the United Nations General Assembly, the author Margaret Thatcher provided in detail the negative consequences of climate change. This inspired my research to the political, economic, and social cultural lenses. Climate change is described as the effect of human activities such as the burning of fossil fuels that result in long term changes to Earth's climate. An example of this would include changes in temperature, wind patterns, precipitation, and many other measures. These effects are already having an impact on Earth today. CO2 is being emitted into the atmosphere by the burning of fossil fuels. And according to the graph, you can see that CO2 levels in the atmosphere are already at its highest point now than ever recorded. This is having a negative impact to the ozone layer of our atmosphere. Earth's temperature has been rising and will continue to rise over time. And then, according to the graph, you can see that the temperature in the year 2000 is substantially higher than in the year 1880. And this is because greenhouse gases are damaging and weakening the ozone layer of our atmosphere, which is significant because the ozone layer of our atmosphere blocks solar ultraviolet radiation from reaching Earth's surface. And because the ozone layer is becoming weaker, more solar radiation is able to reach Earth's surface and therefore warming its temperatures. Looking through the political lens, most Democrats support taking action against climate change, however, most Republicans do not. President Barack Obama pushed for a cap and trade plan during his presidency, which would give the government the power to issue permits that control how much carbon dioxide a business can emit. Supporters argue that it would encourage industries to seek more efficient ways of producing energy. However, Republicans disagree and argue that it would raise energy costs and harm the economy. Experts claim that fossil fuels are the easiest and cheapest source of energy, and therefore, by restricting their use of this energy, prices would dramatically increase, which could potentially lead to people spending more money fueling their cars and food. Looking through the economic lens, however, Democrats realize that by not stopping climate change, the American citizens would actually be spending more money. Climate change increases the frequency and severity of extreme weather patterns such as storms and droughts. And with these more extreme storms, a huge amount of money will be spent on disaster relief. In the past five years alone, storms, floods, droughts, and wildfires cost over $250 billion in damages. For example, Hurricanes Harvey and Irma cost between $150 and $200 billion in damages to Texas and Florida alone. And therefore, over a long period of time, disaster relief would actually be causing American citizens more. Looking through the social and cultural lenses, scientists would warn that if global greenhouse gas emissions are not reduced, the resulting climate change will lead to violent weather patterns, droughts, food scarcity, melting of glaciers, and rising sea levels, all of which could ultimately render the planet uninhabitable. And with this very high chance that the planet could be uninhabitable, it is ethically incorrect to not take action against climate change, especially when considering the future generations of Earth. Future generations will look back on our intended response to climate change disruption and wonder why the world did not act sooner and more aggressively. This is because many, Amer many of America's youth are not old enough to vote on the issue of climate change or to vote on an elected official that could represent their voice. And therefore, they would not really have a say in their own future on Earth. Americans, and although the voting age is appropriate, that only means that American citizens need to take into consideration the youth and the future youth of the world, especially more now when voting. So in conclusion, a possible solution could be to use Jane McDonald's idea of using games to find the best solution to climate change. In her TED talk, she argued that having gamers take on real-world challenges such as climate change, they could find the best solutions and then apply it to the real world. Another, another solution could be to use different sources of energy or fossil fuels, such as wind energy and solar energy.
Okay, <laughs> question for you, Maria. Um, how did your research question evolve as you moved through the research process? And did your research question go in a different direction than you had originally planned? When I first started out, I was going to focus mostly on how it would affect the future generations, but then I realized that there was a lot more research for like climate change as a whole and how it's affecting us now and how it's going to affect us in the future, so I went in that direction. Okay. Um, and then your second one is explain the level of certainty that you have about your conclusion, solution, or recommendation. I would be certain about my conclusion because there is already data showing that using different sources of energy like solar and wind energy are working and are burning our planet a lot less than burning fossil fuels.